Hello, this is Clean Coach Carly. I'm the staff nutritionist at Healthy Habits Living. Today, I'm talking about corn, the food corn. I often talk about supplements, but today I'm talking about food and food only. So corn, what is corn? Well, it's a vegetable and it's a fruit and it's also um, categorized as a cereal grain. So it is technically a grain. We usually think of grain like wheat and buckwheat and spelt and kamut and quinoa. Um, some of those are actually seeds, but that's another story. Anyways, corn is an interesting food. So is it part of a low carb diet? Well, it can be. It's lower carb than potatoes um, and quinoa and wheat, um, but it's higher in carb than some starchy vegetables like parsnips. Is it a paleo food? Well, not exactly. Because it's so low carb um, and less complex than some other cereal grains in terms of the carbohydrate molecules, some people will eat it on a paleo diet or consider it part of a paleo diet. But it really, really doesn't fit into that paleo eating. Because remember, paleo should be the foods that our hunter and gatherer ancestors um, ate. And corn is more of a crop. Right? It's a farmed crop, not a wild food that we eat in North and South America. So it's really not part of a paleo diet, although it is fairly low carb to uh, compared to some other foods. How about keto? Is it on the keto diet? No, it is not on the keto diet. So the keto diet really, um, when you're trying to get into ketosis, um, only allows for green vegetables and not even any starchy vegetables. Corn is considered a starchy vegetable and a cereal grain and a fruit and a seed. So it's got all those things. Um, what about things made out of corn? So I remember 25 years ago ish, 20 years ago, um, when I became gluten free, all of a sudden I couldn't eat pasta and chips and crackers and cookies and all of these things that we made with flour. And so what could I eat? Well, I could eat corn products and I could eat rice products. So I ate a lot of rice crackers, uh, rice cakes, uh, corn chips, corn tortillas. Uh, is there a problem with that? Well, there might be, especially if you have a kind of a complex, chronic um, immune system issue. So I was dealing with leaky gut forever and ever and ever and ever, um, mast cell activation, histamine intolerance, uh, Lyme disease, and Sears, chronic inflammatory respiratory sim, uh, syndrome because of mold exposures. So what's wrong with corn and all of those types of illnesses? Well, Corn tends to be very high in fungal spores. Um, so that's because we store corn for a while. And also just because of the way it is, corn has a lot of mold toxins with it. And so if you are dealing with any of those autoimmune type of activation, mast cell type of things that I mentioned, you really do want to avoid corn. I know that's not very convenient because now you're probably off of wheat and gluten and now you're off of corn and it's like, well, what am I supposed to eat? Well, you're supposed to eat a lot of healthy proteins, fats, and non-starchy vegetables. So here's another issue with corn. In the United States, it's estimated over 60% of the corn that's grown in the fields, mostly in the Midwest, is genetically modified. Boo for genetically modified. Okay. So genetically modified means that they've taken the corn and they've injected into the DNA of the corn some gene from another plant, animal, um, or fungus. And so we don't know the long-term implications of genetic modification. Here's an, another issue that kind of goes along with the GMO. Corn is the most heavily sprayed Roundup crop. Okay, so the seeds are called Roundup Ready, which means they've been soaked in Roundup, which is also known as Monsanto's glyphosate. Numerous lawsuits um, and class action lawsuits. All you have to do is Google to find out what the lawsuits are about. But basically, they're about um, glyphosate or Roundup contributing to all sorts of diseases, um, namely uh, cancer, lymphoma, brain cancer. A couple other ones have been called out specifically. So we don't want to be eating non-organic corn products or non-organic corn because it's um, very likely that they're either genetically modified or sprayed heavily with Roundup or both. <laughs> okay, so that's a problem. We don't want that. Okay, 
So what are your options with corn? So I always recommend for my clients who have any kind of uh, chronic condition to do an elimination diet where they take out all the top allergens, including wheat, dairy, soy, corn, sugar, and a couple of other foods. So I recommend an elimination, take out corn out of your diet six to eight weeks, see how you feel when you introduce it back in. Um, you can do that by doing a whole 30, uh, which is only 30 days. Uh, I usually recommend a little bit longer for corn. Here's the other thing that you can do. If you do want to have corn as part of your diet, you can look for the seal of approval on the outside of corn products like corn chips, um, namely, and tortillas. Those are the two main ones uh, that says non GMO project verified. So that's exactly what it sounds like. Um, though those corn products in that bag have been verified, the DNA of the corn in that bag has been checked to make sure that it is not genetically modified. Arrowhead Mills has a lot of corn and corn products like corn masa, corn flour, corn grits, polenta, um, that are like raw ingredients for corn uh, products uh, that are non-GMO verified. And then of course there's brands that have um, corn chips that are already made that are non-GMO verified and um, tortillas. Okay, so if you want corn in your diet, look for the non-GMO certification. Okay. The other thing you can do is make your own corn products. So you start with, let's say, corn masa because you want to make tamales delicious. Um, and you start with a non-GMO verified corn masa. Um, and then you might even want to soak it in lime water. So the reason that you want to soak it is because uh, traditionally Native American cultures uh, uh, that ate maize or corn in their diet, they would soak their corn or their maize in lime water or ash water because it would help to alkalize the corn and help to release vitamin B3, which is riboflavin. So overall, it helps with the digestion or absorption of the nutrients in corn, makes it less irritating to the gut, right? More digestible. So that's what I would do um, if I was going to cook something with corn, which is actually what I do when I'm going to cook something with corn um, or corn flour or corn masa or corn grits or polenta or whatever it might be. The other option that you have for safely eating corn that isn't genetically modified or sprayed with glyphosate is to grow your own corn. <laughs> so um, there's some areas of the country where corn grows amazingly well. And they're, one of my favorite seed catalogs is called the Whole Seed Catalog or Baker Creek Catalog. And you can get heirloom corn. Heirloom corn means it's not genetically modified and it hasn't been hybridized and it's not sprayed with Roundup. So that's another great way to consume your own corn is to grow your own corn. So back to the beginning, um, should you be eating corn? Shouldn't you be eating corn? I mean, I always say moderation in all things, and there's always a place to eliminate something from your diet for a short time to see how you react when you uh, introduce it back in to see if any of your symptoms that you've pinpointed come back with the introduction of corn. And that, again, can be for numerous reasons. It's a complex carbohydrate. Um, it's hard to digest if it isn't soaked. It might be genetically modified um, and or it might be sprayed with Roundup. Those would be the top reasons that corn would likely not agree with your system. So I always recommend, again, anyone who has a chronic condition or an inflammatory condition, that they do some sort of elimination of the top allergenic foods, including corn. So that is my um, piece on corn. Um, I love the flavor of corn, by the way. I do have it in moderate to um, low amounts in my diet. And so here at Healthy Habits Living, we're always here to help you get healthy so that you can stay healthy and be healthy.